In this video, we're going to discuss the second half of photosynthesis, namely the light-independent reactions. So the light-independent reactions are what happen right after the light-dependent reactions in chloroplasts. Okay? Again, do make sure that you've gone through the basic mechanism of photosynthesis in topic 2.9, the SL part, before going into these details, because otherwise it might be a little bit confusing. Okay, so let's talk about the location of the light independent reactions. So what we mean by light independent, of course, is that it does not depend of light, right? And this process occurs in the stroma of chloroplasts. So remember, a plant cell has organelles, and one of these organelles, one of these organelles is called a chloroplast, and a chloroplast looks something like this. The light dependent reactions happen in the thylakoids, but light independent reactions are going to occur in the stroma. Okay, so that's that's an important point that it happens in the stroma. Because the stroma contains all the important enzymes for the light independent reactions. Okay, so the light independent reactions can also basically be called the Calvin cycle. Okay, so the Calvin cycle is a series of chemical reactions that basically lead to a cycle. Okay, and just to give you an overview first, it is split into three stages. The first is carbon, carbon fixation. The second is reduction. And the third is regeneration. Okay, so just to give you an overview before we get into the details. All right, let's get on with the, car, with the Calvin cycle. So the Calvin cycle is a series of reactions which eventually is going to take a starting product called ribulose biphosphate, convert it into another product until eventually it then gets regenerated. But basically there are three intermediate steps. The first is carbon fixation. Now what we mean by carbon fixation is taking carbon from the atmosphere and bringing it into an organic compound. So atmospheric carbon brought into Okay, so it's brought into an organic compound. Now this process is absolutely essential for the survival of every organism on the planet. Because if plants were not able to do this, if they were not able to take what we call an abiotic factor, right, which you'll, you'll remember from ecology, and combine it with something that is organic, well then the, photos, the, the entire planet wouldn't be able to generate these organic compounds. So carbon fixation is absolutely essential. And the way that it's done is with an enzyme, a carboxylase enzyme. So carboxylase is just a, the general term for one of these enzymes. But this enzyme is called Rubisco, okay? And it's one of those seven, uh, one of those six proteins that you have to know in uh, topic 2.4, the functions of proteins, if you remember that. So what it does is that it takes carbon in CO2 and it combines it with this five carbon molecule called ribulose bisphosphate, okay? So that's what's written up here. And when it does this, it combines it into, first it actually forms a little intermediate that has six carbons, right? Because if one carbon and five carbons come together, that forms a six carbon. But then this six carbon will immediately split. So it's, it's an instable intermediate. So that's why it's not written here. This will immediately split into two, three carbon molecules. Okay. Now, if you have, for every, when the cycle runs, you will take three molecules of CO2 three molecules of ribulose biphosphate and combine them together to give you six molecules of glycerate three phosphate. Okay, so this is the three carbon molecule. Now, whenever you draw out the carbon cycle, when you talk about how many there is of each of the, of the byproducts, just make sure that when you move from one stage to the next stage, there's the same amount of carbons. So three times one is three, and three times five is 15. So that means that you have 18 carbons here in total, and six times three is also 18, so that's fine. So that's the first step of the, the Calvin cycle, that we do carbon fixation between CO2 and ribulose biphosphate using Rubisco. The second step then is what happens to this glycerate 3-phosphate, also uh, summarized as G3P in 
in some textbooks, okay? So G3P or glycerate 3-phosphate is now going to be reduced. Now, if you remember from the previous unit, we said that reduction is the gain of electrons or of hydrogens, right? Now, the way or the reason why this happens or how this happens is that the NADPH molecule that we formed in the light dependent reactions, okay, so we have to use this NADPH, the NADPH will give off an electron and some hydrogen to form NADP, okay, so NADPH turns into NADP, and there is one molecule of NADPH for every molecule of glycerate 3-phosphate, which is why we need six of them, okay, so that's going to reduce the molecule. And to do this process, you also need to provide the glycerate 3-phosphate with some energy. And so that's why ATP will hydrolyze, that's when it breaks down, into ADP and, and inorganic phosphate. So that's providing some energy. Now, I just want to point out that these two molecules, right, ATP and NADPH, were formed in the light-dependent reactions, right? So this is kind of illustrating why we needed to do the light-dependent reactions first before we could do the light-independent reactions because we need this ATP and NADPH that we formed. But so after this process, glycerate 3-phosphate is turned into another 3-carbon molecule called triose phosphate. And since there's six of these, there's also going to be six of these. And then what happens to this triose phosphate then? Well, the third part of the cycle is when we do some regeneration of RUBP. But here is where it's, it's Students sometimes get a little bit uh, tricked out, okay? So when you have six molecules of triose phosphate, okay, one sixth of those molecules, i.e. one of those, so one of these molecules, one of these six molecules is going to not take part in the cycle anymore. It's going to leave the cycle. And we'll talk about what that does in a second. But five sixths of them, i.e. five of those three carbon molecules, are going to return and become RUBP, ribulose biphosphate again. And in order to do this, you need to again provide some of that energy that you made in the light dependent reactions. So five of the triose phosphates makes ribulose biphosphate again, which is why we call this stage regeneration. But the other one sixth will go off to form a sugar, okay? Because remember, the entire point of photosynthesis, right, is to take CO2 and water and then convert it into glucose and oxygen, right? We said that the oxygen was a byproduct of the light-dependent reactions. The water was used in the light-dependent reactions for photolysis. And CO2 is that molecule that entered into the Calvin cycle. So we still need to make this, we need to account for this glucose. And that is made in the, this part of the Calvin cycle, where the triose phosphate, one of the molecules, will form uh, half a sugar molecule, okay? Now, what this means is that because sugars are six carbon molecules usually, right? So we're typically talking about things like, like sucrose or, or, or uh, glucose, right? Six carbon molecules. We need to do this entire process again, which means that we need to get uh, another molecule of triose phosphate coming out to then form a full sugar. I just want to point out that in order to produce a full sugar molecule, so to make a sugar, glucose, the Calvin cycle needs to run six times. You need to do six times of the Calvin cycle. Because in the Calvin cycle, we've just discussed how three of these, these CO2 molecules will go into this, uh, this uh, cycle, right? But that's just kind of to summarize it into one. In reality, in order for three of these molecules to come together, the Calvin cycle has to go through it three times, okay? So the, this, this process has, has happened three times in what we've drawn here. And so in total, to make a sugar, the Calvin cycle needs to run six times, right? You need six CO2 molecules so that you can make, uh, you can make in total uh, 12 triose phosphates so that one-sixth is equal to two. So one-sixth of 12 is two triose phosphate molecules, which means that you then have six. Okay, so that's just kind of to illustrate the point that you need multiple turns of the Calvin cycle to generate a full sugar molecule. But that is the final step of, of Calvin cycle, so the regeneration of RUBP. And to do that, you need some ATP molecules. So what were the key points of this video? It was that the light independent reactions occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast and that carbon fixation requires an enzyme which combines CO2 with ribulose biphosphate. 
In the reduction stage, glycerate 3-phosphate is converted into triose phosphate using NADPH and ATP, and these two products come from the light dependent reaction. And in the regeneration stage, we use ATP to convert triose phosphate molecules back into ribulose biphosphate. And then in the carbon formation or the glucose formation, a fraction of these triose phosphates will be used to make sugars. So I hope that made sense. That kind of concludes our discussion of photosynthesis.